Calling all SCP Foundation staff, calling all SCP Foundation staff, this is Dr. Theron Sherman beaming to you live from Site-42. This is the anomalous broadcast from Site-42. Do you read us in the chat? Can you get our signal? If you can hear me loud and clear, send us a hello in the chat. Make sure to like, share, subscribe using your Foundation-issued encrypted YouTube accounts. That's right, please do not share Foundation issued videos using your civilian YouTube account, Steve. God, so many disinformation campaigns by Steve alone. Looks like we are beaming live, so here we go. Hey there, Foundation staff. This is Sherman, but you can call me Sherm. Welcome to another anomalous broadcast from Site 42. For everybody unfamiliar with our show, the rundown goes like this. Number one, we read an SCP document or tale or multiple sometimes like tonight. B, I open up the floor to the community to discuss what we've read. I will be checking the YouTube chat and if we are lucky, authors, staff will show up live on the chat to talk, live on the stream to talk to us as well. If you, uh, da, 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 blah, 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 my teleprompter's out of order today. Crud, I typed, I copy and pasted wrong. Skip, skip, skip. Tonight, we are going over two SCP articles of a very unique theme. Tonight, we are going over SCP-5167, titled, When the Imposter is Sus, and SCP-5761, titled, When the Imposter is Sus 2, Nightmare Hour, both by author Tan Honey. And unfortunately, due to time zone constraints, Tan Honey cannot join us on the show, so we have a panel of SCP authors to discuss this with, who I will bring on to the show forthwith. That's not the panel, that's some art. That's the panel. Hello, panel. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourselves to the, ch to the chat. <laughs> Take your time. Fosters. <laughs> Okay, no, I've been on here before. My name is Atal. Um, my pronouns are Z here or they, them. I'm an author on the SCP Wiki. I cannot fucking believe these articles are real. And I am in my car right now, in, my ac in an actual parking lot in real life. So we'll just see how this goes, okay? We'll so when the terrifying the parking garage scene happens, we'll <laughs> bear witness for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, I am Jasper, or, or Fluffy. Um, uh, I use he, him pronouns. Uh, I'm also an author on the SCP Wiki. Uh, these, these articles have no right to be as good as they are, um, but they are very good. So yeah, I'm just here to talk about them a bit more. We're going to read the first one uh, because it came out of nowhere. So we're going to start with no context, and then we'll get to discussing the... Ah, the discourse that came from these articles afterwards. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, starting with number one, SCP-5167, titled, When the Imposter is Sus, by Tanhoney. Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. Foundation web crawlers are to monitor online communities for mentions of potential SCP-5167 sightings. In cases where these sightings are confirmed, all direct witnesses are to be apprehended and all secondary evidence removed from the platform in question. Apprehended witnesses are to be held until symptoms of SCP-5167 abate and are then to be amnesticized and released under a standard mental breakdown cover story. Description. SCP-5167 is an entity known to manifest as a player of the online multiplayer game Among Us under the username of Pathonis. SCP-5167 will randomly join multiplayer lobbies of the game and participate as an ordinary player would, with the majority of its anomalous effects only becoming obvious following the initial encounter. During this initial encounter, SCP-5167 has been observed to communicate using the in-game chat function, although the majority of its speech consists of lengthy diatribes produced at little prompting from the other players. Individuals who interact with SCP-5167 in-game will subsequently begin to exhibit symptoms of paranoia and Capgrass delusion. The severity of these symptoms varies from person to person, but in initial cases was significant enough to prompt acts of perceived self-defense from those affected. 
These symptoms persist for a period initially believed to encompass several months, but has lessened to one or two weeks as observation has continued. SCP-5167 was initially discovered by the Foundation after a period during which the player Pythonis was a minor urban legend in the Among Us community. Although interest in the figure died down fairly quickly, Foundation webcrawlers flagged recorded accounts of player encounters with the entity as potential anomalous phenomena. Learning computer Psy2, codename Mel Meville, Meville? Meville. 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 Was assigned to track sessions of the game until SCP-5167 was encountered. And when the other players in said session were tracked down, they exhibited the symptoms now associated with SCP-5167. Foundation efforts to track the individual behind SCP-5167 have thus far proven unsuccessful. All attempts to locate the internet access point used by the anomaly have led to a deserted home address in rural Greece. Analysis of Impending SCP-5167 Neutralization as requested by head researcher Abrams, I've had the Site-22 analysts look into the progress of SCP-5167's anomalous effects over the period we've observed it, and the results are much as I expected. When we first discovered SCP-5167, for the sake of argument, let's say this is when SCP-5167 first came into existence, the impact it had on victims was severe. I don't think we have to remind you of what Billy Heth did to his family's faces. Ugh. But since then, almost immediately, really, since the first couple of manifestations, the potency of its effects has started to decline. Full detachment from reality became delusion, and delusion has now become paranoia, and the intensity of that paranoia is lessening in each new case. This is all conjecture, of course, and shouldn't be taken as gospel, but based on what we've observed of this anomaly thus far, our estimation is that SCP-5167's anomalous effects will become inert by the end of the year. Whether it'll keep popping up in these video game matches is another story, though. Signed, Site-22 Intelligence Director Michelle Ross. Observation Log 5167-1 The following is a log of SCP-5167 as observed by learning computer Psy-2 in a game of Among Us. SCP-5167 participated in the game without communicating until specifically addressed by other players. Following the game, all participating players were tracked down and treated as containment procedures dictate. Communications logged below. Begin log. Player John Arbuckle speaks. Red, where were you when we were doing a reactor? SCP-5167 speaks the next few bits. Where was I? I was there when the mountains were newborn and the oceans virginal. I was there when gods walked among men and their wisdom was cast down like the sunlight. I was there when mankind was capable of legends. And now, I find myself in a world that has forgotten even the taste of life, even the very concept of life beyond existing from one day to the next. Mere continuance. Where all the world is wasted away in idle play of emotions that once rang true. I am in a world where even the gods are forgotten, their bones washed away by time. A world where man has moved on, where all the legacy I have left are three fucking sentences on Wikipedia. I thought my time had come again. I thought this could be the new me. But this is nothing. Let me stay dead this time. I'm tired. 12 seconds of no activity. The character titled Your Mom speaks up. Red is sus. XG1200. Yeah, vote red. End log. And that's it. <laughs> Before we start discussing, we have a new arrival to the chat. I am gonna let Tiuman oh join us midway. Oh boy! And so as soon as Tiuman joins any chat, then I can let Tiuman into our chat. So while I am figuring out how to let Tiuman in, thoughts about this first SCP of the evening? And it, I mean, it's a pretty good article, I think. I mean, like. Like, if you re completely remove it from all of the context, it's like, yeah, this is a pretty good article. Like, it works. 
And then we get into the context, and that's where things start getting really hairy, I think. Because just so much has occurred. Uh, should I start talking about the, the, the Twitter incidents now? <laughs> Yes, because just my summary of 5161 when I first read it was, uh, this is kind of boring and I'm not really into it, but it's fine. Right. Like, I'm not... Like it's pretty good. It's, it is a fine SCP. It does its job. It's good. It, it deserves to be in on the site. But right. I wasn't wowed and I, did, I didn't really get in its corner until the backlash happened, so... Right, right. So, some fucking C-list YouTuber, like, found it somehow and was like, what the fuck? They let you put Among Us as an SCP? The website is going downhill. And, like, everybody just beat his ass. Just, the, there's just, the, the SCP community, like, the SCP community on Twitter is not really unified. Like, we argue all the time about everything. <laughs> but whenever someone says some stupid shit, we are all just unified in our ability to ratio the shit out of him in that, that glorious day. <laughs> That that was a, there was very much a ratio occurring. <laughs> yeah, so it's you being on SCP Twitter is a trip because you're right. We don't agree on anything unless an outsider comes after the community, and then it's like like a swarm of bees, man. <laughs> right. Oh God, it's vicious. Like the NFT guy. That's like that's a story for another day. I remember that guy. <laughs> So yeah, this, uh, this article got a lot of backlash, and the problem with the backlash, the reason that we're so dismissive of it, uh, we're so dismissive of it, and we get labeled as a toxic community, and we rage at people, and we call you out on your bullshit, and we get called toxic for it, but the people who came out against Among Us SCP did not even read the SCP. And that's what infuriates me so much. The responses were, quote, this is the big quote. They made the imposter from Among Us an SCP. It's like, no. No. <laughs> Nothing that. in that that's article that says that. It's a god, bro. <laughs> it's a Greek god. There's a random like god. <laughs> Isn't Pythonus like the god of en the Greek god of envy or jealousy or something like that? Envy, yeah, envy. And it's like, and you're like, it's not even that fucking long. Like, just go read it. And so, if you're it's like, literally not even that fucking long. So my like my one critique is, um, I don't understand why Pythonus is playing Among Us specifically. If it's because it's a popular game that he thought he could jump on the memes for clout. Then yeah, I get that as a use for Pythonus jumping in that particular game. Yeah, I think the like the the implication was that he was looking for relevancy. That's my thought um, as well. Uh, the, the, oh, the other nitpick I have with this article is that there's a character limit in Among Us, and I think everything that he says goes over it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I will tell you this though, I do after having read the second one. I'm even more, I'm not more impressed with this one based on it, but I am more in love with, oh, I know these characters and where they're going to come back in about 10 minutes when we start reading the second oh, yeah. one. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, the second one just makes me impressed with Tanhoney, like as, as an author and a person. <laughs> that he pulled that out, out of this pretty okay article. And yeah. so, yes, uh, by the way, Tuman is here, but... If you're talking, we can't hear you right now. Tumen, are you muted? Yeah, we can't hear you. Wait, really? I think I heard you. Oh, I heard something. Uh, might be. There you are. Yeah. Hello, Tumen. Name and pronouns. Introduce yourself to the stream. Hello. Uh, my display name is Tumen. I, I'm he, him. I'm here. Yeah. Thank you for joining uh -huh. us. Tumen is another SCP author. Did you have feelings about 5167 before we move on to 5671? I mean, being th this was, uh, I think it was originally like an in joke in a server that Tan Hani was in that I managed to witness the inception of. And I didn't really have any strong feelings for and against it. I mean, like, I, I like Tan Hani's articles, I upvote them on principle. <laughs> I mean, he's, 
He's the guy who wrote, like, 5,000. He's the guy who wrote, uh, Tan Honey's Proposal and Tan Honey's Proposal 2. Three, three, yeah, three, my mind is a blank right now, yeah. but... Yeah, he's a good author, and this... <laughs> it surprised me. Like, how could he make Among Us? <laughs> SCP. This I remember good. when... Twice! Tan Honey tends to go into hibernation. He disappears for a while... Then he comes back and writes a hundred articles. Then he disappears. Then he comes back and writes another hundred articles. I remember the start of this string because every time I picked an SCP to read for YouTube for like a month, I accidentally picked Tanhoney articles every time. He just wrote so <laughs> many of them all at once. Can I recommend uh, a Tanhoney article that I don't think gets enough attention? Get your pens. Okay. Fluffy has a Tanhoney recommendation for you, chat. Um, it's a really, really short article, but it's SCP-5022, Kid Heads. It's really uh, cool. disturbing and just ominous. Oh, yeah. And, That's the one with the car chase, right? I think, I think you just need to read it to, ex to experience it, but it's, it's amazing. It's also really so, short. I thought you were going to so. say Meat Angels. <laughs> <laughs> the Meat yeah. Angels is really good, too. It's and the for... Tanhoney's one with the swimming pool. The, like... Oh, yeah. I always forget the details of that one. That's really good. If you want to have a good time on the SCP Wiki, just go to Tanhoney's author page. It's in the description. And just go nuts, guys, because Tanhoney... Welcome to the Tanhoney is Awesome Hour, brought to you by us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, shall we roll into Article 2? Yes. It's well, you two. said you were going to take Michelle Ross. Uh, Mary, yeah. Uh, Mary, yeah. Fluffy, who did you want? Werner? Uh, Director Werner, yeah. Tumen, you want to take any voices in this one? Do you want me to just toss one at you as we go? You, you can do that, yeah. All just right. I will call on you at a convenient stuff. time to be my backup. Welcome to Cam, Tumen. All right. Starting at the top of... SCP-5761, titled, When the Imposter is Sus 2, Nightmare Hour, by Tanhoney. Here we go. Item number, SCP-5761. Level 3 Classified. Containment Class, Esoteric. Secondary Class, Keter Dark. Disruption Class, Eki. Risk Class, Danger. Special Containment Procedures. All relevant space agencies have agreed to block information regarding SCP-5761 until such a time that the Foundation can ascertain the nature of the anomaly and formulate countermeasures. Description. SCP-5761 is the International Space Station. At 1300 hours 35 minutes Eastern Standard Time on October 2nd, 2025, an unidentified entity assumed control of the ISS, took all personnel aboard hostage, and began exerting anomalous influence on the space within the station. Video surveillance shows that the hostages are being forced to perform basic repair work on the interior of the station, suggesting that they have been acquired in order to maintain the station itself. Despite the fact that this would imply the entity has need of these individuals, on two separate occasions, hostages aboard SCP-5761 have been executed via bisection by an invisible force. As a result, only eight hostages remain at the present time. Due to the recency of SCP-5761's emergence, a full understanding of the anomaly has not yet been reached. This document is thus subject to updates. In order to chart the progression of the SCP-5761 anomaly, a selection of logs taken during the investigation have been enclosed with this file. Personnel are advised to familiar of blah, blah, blah. Personnel are advised to familiarize themselves with this material for full SCP-5761 context. Starting with initial anomaly briefing excerpt. Brief. Initial explanation and elaboration on SCP-5761 to site director Werner following manifestation of the said anomaly. Brief con conducted by researcher Mary Ross. Mary and Werner, this is you. Begin log. We've received confirmation from the concerned agencies that they'll keep the, uh, the current situation under wraps for as long as possible on their end, but we're not especially uh, sure how long that'll last. The situation's still developing, of course, so it's difficult to say anything for certain. I understand. Before we continue, though, I do have 
I do have some concerns about the documentation I've been given. This, um, yes. Sir, I'm more than happy to address this. Under, just under the, ah, the, under the item number here, I'm seeing a object class. I'm sure this is a misprint, but you can just, could you just confirm what that says to me? It says esoteric, sir, Kenner Dark. And is that a misprint? It is not. I see. And could you, ah, could you elucidate exactly what a Keter Dark object class uh, represents? It, uh, it worries me that you have to think about it. We're meant to be, you're meant to be able to tell what these classes represent at a glance. That's what they're, that's what they're for. I couldn't tell you what Keter Dark means. Why isn't it just Keter? I've read the file. It should be Keter. All, all these, it's fine. Just being Keter. Why have we stuck dark at the end? I'm sorry, sir. That's the situation still developing. It's ridiculous. I'm sorry, sir. At any rate, do we have any, any working theories? I've been told the intelligence department has been looking into this heavily over the past few days. But I'm, I'm not seeing any of their findings here in the documents, documentation. There is a working theory, but it's fairly... I'm, I'm not sure if it's one you'd especially care for. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I care for it, Ross. It matters whether it's right or not. Out with it. We think it might be about Among Us. No. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid that's what the what the evidence seems to point to, sir. Uh, the the number of people taken to the station, the the tasks they're being for, made to perform, the killings they they are reminiscent of the game. You have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I do not have to admit. Do you, do you understand that 5167 was a colossal embarrassment for my office? I, I had to go to 059 and request one of his learning computers to do nothing but play Among Us all day for a year. Do you understand? Yes, sir. He laughed at me. Generally. Generally. The 05 don't laugh at people. He pointed and laughed at me. It was awful. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. That's coincidental. This, this, this whole matter could just has easily been modeled around the thing, right? Or something else like that. I'm not opening the 5167 file back up. It's confirmed neutralized. There is one more piece of evidence, sir. And that is? The anomaly manifested on the 10th of February at exactly 1335 Eastern Standard Time. What of it? That is the exact date and time the Among Us servers shut down. Fuck. <laughs> Recording end. <laughs> Poor Director Werner. <laughs> Conclusion, Researcher Ross ordered to further pursue connection between SCP-5761 and SCP-5167. Limited resources granted to facilitate this investigation. Next up, consultation. Learning Computer Psi 2, codename Mevil. Brief. Interview conducted by researcher Ross with Learning Computer Psi 2, Mevil, which was previously assigned to SCP-5167 case. Focus of conversation was seeking a second opinion on the potential link between SCP-5761 and SCP-5167. Recording start. Hmm, hmm, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, ch 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 Tumen. You want it? Can make a request? Yes. All right, all Thank right. You. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> oh boy. I see. I must agree with your assessment, ma'am. This anomaly does seem to be related to SCP-5167, at least in some fashion. How so? I assumed you would be satisfied with my agreement. I'd just like to know the basis behind it, is all. Of course. Know that I say this with no degree of egotism. I have most likely interacted with the game known as Among Us more than any conscious entity. And, by extension, I have interacted with the anomaly known as SCP-5167 more than any conscious entity, including itself. I am exceedingly aware of its movements and tendencies, even down to the finer points that cannot necessarily be perceived by, by humans. Sorry. 
And that's how you can see the connection? There is a pattern to all things, Miss Ross. And this pattern you've shown me is the same as Thonus's. It is exceedingly sus. Exceedingly... Oh, god damn it. This is what happens when you get billion dollar pieces of hardware to play your little kitty games, lady. The verbiage is all fucked up. Forgive me. Exceedingly suspicious. This anomaly and 5167 are two drinks from the same well. Seek the latter, and you shall discern the nature of the former. I see. Perhaps not yet. Good day to you, ma'am. <laughs> Recording end. Reestablishment of contact with SCP-5167 is what's up next. Brief. Action was taken by researcher Mary Ross in order to reestablish contact with the dormant anomaly known as SCP-5167. Action took place on the outskirts of the village of Haima, located in rural Greece. During the initial investigation of SCP-5167, the access point through which it connected to the game Among Us was determined to be located in Haima on two separate occasions. Researcher Ross was provided with the living body of Agent Marston to hopefully use as a vessel for SCP-5167's consciousness. She was accompanied by Mobile Task Force Sampi-6, codename Imaginary Numbers, for the purpose of security in the field. Recording can I just say real quick how much I love that tiny little detail in the footnote, like, his consciousness was destroyed and he was like, and he said ahead of time, yeah, if my consciousness gets destroyed, I want you guys to use my body for science. Like, that is just a phenomenal little detail. <laughs> That's, I'm, I'm glad you piped up because I don't have the footnotes in my teleprompter. So that was actually a really uh, good one. Read it? It's uh, Agent Marston's consciousness was destroyed during armed conflict with GOI 9229 Phantasmagoria. In accordance with his wishes, his living body was preserved for research purposes. And like, that's so badass. And it's just like a tiny little footnote. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this kind of world building stuff is like what makes Absolutely. lots of articles good you know yeah because now this has gone from among us scp1 to among us scp2 and now i really want to know what happened to marston <laughs> yeah <laughs> what, like, what's his deal I, i've been meaning to ask am i visible like can you see me i can't mm. tell no you are not on camera okay. right now i assumed you turned right, it off right. for some reason i I didn't turn it off. It, I think Discord just does this when I switch uh, apps. <laughs> Switching apps and reading. Yeah, that'll do it. All right. Well, that's good to know. I can just like, sit back now. <laughs> exactly. We'll have you in audio until we're done in the discussion. You can come back on cam. Yep. All right. We're at the start of the recording. I don't know who was in this, so keep frosty for your voices. Operations begin at night. A full moon is visible. A summoning circle of sufficient complexity has been laid down beforehand by the three members of Mobile Task Force Sampi-6, and the body of Ancient Marston has been placed in the center. Researcher Ross, standing a short distance away, turns to Sarah Locke, current commander of Mobile Task Force Sampi-6. Time? 2.53 a.m. That adds up to 10, the number of completion. Yeah, it's time to begin. Let's go, guys. The other two members of Mobile Task Force Sampi-6... Abiola Buhl and Tyra Jensen begin the summoning chant from the opposite sides of the circle. Buhl chants in a combination of Coin Greek and Computer Binary. Tyra Jensen chants using American Sign Language. Noticeable oh, weather. Chant. Say again? I, I love the detail, like the visual of chanting in sign language in binary. I, I love it. I'm sorry. Like, there's just so many cool little details in this. The, the wonderful thing about doing these streams is that no matter how intricately you read when you're reading silently, you always skim something by accident. And now that I have to say all this out loud, I'm seeing so many things I didn't before. Like, that is, that is in fact amazing, and I didn't know about it until right now. It's awesome. Noticeable weather alteration begins to occur as heavy clouds obscure the full moon. In the center of the summoning circle... Agent Marston's body begins noticeably twitching. Researcher Ross looks around nervously. Sure, we should be standing so close. Distance isn't a factor. If you piss off the gods, they'll know where to find you. Running at this point would just make things worse. Lightning strikes in the distance. Wind and rain intensify. 
all, all the same, I... It's too late. In the center of the summoning circle, Agent Marston opens his eyes and sits up. He looks around the area. Boole and Jansen cease chanting. Inhabitation of Marston by SCP-5167 confirmed. SCP-5167 turns to look at Researcher Ross. Foolishness. SCP-5167 leaps off the ground and begins charging full speed towards Researcher Ross. There's a flash of light as Sarah Locke tases it, and it falls to the ground, twitching. We've got him. Recording end. Conclusion. SCP-5167 successfully captured and brought into custody. Next log is a consultation with SCP-5167-1. Brief. Initial interview of SCP-5167 following capture. Interview conducted in the back of vehicle during transport. Recording start. Hello? SCP-5167 does not respond. Are you thirsty? Hungry, perhaps? We brought supplies with us. Still doesn't respond. I understand that restraints aren't too comfortable, but... I was supposed to be dead. I was dead. Yet you have brought me back. Pulled me unwilling from my rest. Why? We had need of you. I am not the sort of god people pray to, little girl. What need do you have of me? What is it, then? Do you covet your neighbor's land? Thirst for their partner? Do you wish that what is theirs would instead be yours? Not exactly. Then I cannot help you. I would appreciate it if you were to dispatch me with a single blow. A dagger in the eye or a bullet in the brain, if possible. Enough to send me to a long, unending sleep. I am afraid not. Uh, a situation has developed which we require your unique perspective for. Do you remember... Do you recall the game Among Us? <sighs> My last desperate hope. My drawn-out death rattle. I wandered in that digital abyss for several months before realizing my irrelevancy. What of it? Mary Ross shows SCP-5167 an image of SCP-5761. We believe that some entity is trying to imitate that game here in the real world. They've ten taken ten people up into the skies and forced them to... To reenact the sorts of things you do in the game, like a... I do not care. People have died. They do little else. If you cooperate, I can make sure you get better treatment. Even you must care about things like that, right? Better food, softer sheets. I'm sure the divine is used to a certain standard of comfort. Perhaps in another age, but not now. It does not matter. A human body is a temperamental machine. If I simply wait long enough, I will be dead again. I... I am now finished speaking. Leave. Huh. Question just from me. They're in a car, right? They're in transport? <laughs> Where is she going? Yes. Just, just tuck and roll, please. I'm done with this conversation. <laughs> I guess that's like a get out of my face thing. Maybe it's a maybe it's a motor, uh, an RV, and they can like she could walk to the front. Mm -hmm. All right. That was my mental image. <laughs> Recording end. Communication. Learning computer side two. Code name Mevel to researcher Mary Ross. Oh, shit. Miss Ross, I thank you for your consideration in sending me this audio file. I've compared the temperament and speech patterns of the entity you've captured to the SCP-5167 stored in my memory, and I am happy to confirm that they are indeed the same individual. I agree with your proposal. SCP-5167 should be brought back to Site-22, where it can be properly interrogated, and I can analyze it fully. Please proceed with this as quickly as possible. Incidentally, there has been a third death aboard SCP-5761 today. I fear we may not have a great deal of time, 
in which to understand this anomaly. But I am confident you and all Foundation staff will give it your best efforts. Next log, Consultation, SCP-5167-2. Brief. Additional attempt to communicate with SCP-5167 as transmit arrangements to Site-22 are being made. Recording start. Hello? It takes a while for a human body to starve, you know? Even dying of thirst takes time. I have a proposal for you. I do not care. I think you'll like it. If you tell me everything you know about this anomaly, SCP-5761, then, right here and now, I swear I will take out my handgun and shoot you in the head. A much quicker exit than waiting to starve to death, assuming the Foundation doesn't insist on feeding you intravenously. <sighs> I will now tell you a story. I'd like to hear the answer to my request first. I will now tell you a story. Once, in a time where man was capable of greatness, there lived two brothers. They lived outside the grand cities, out in the wilds, among the beasts and trees. They did this because they sought to create their own great legacy, rather than contribute to another. They lived happily for a time, content with their hunting and their gardening, trusting that these humble efforts would be their own reward. One day, however, the elder brother begins to worry. He is growing older, and he has made no impact on the world. His death would go unremarked upon. He decides that he must make some effort now, in his twilight years, to make himself stand out from the rest. So he cuts down a forest and begins turning his little house into a grand tower, tall enough to pierce the skies. When was this? Where? <laughs> the answers would mean nothing to you. <clears throat> the elder brother indeed creates his tower. But when his younger sibling wakes up in the morning and steps outside, he sees what his brother has created and grows jealous. He worries that he will always be seen as a mere accessory to his brother, and not a person all his own. So the younger brother, too, cuts down a forest, and turns his house into a great tower as well. It continues as you would expect. When the older brother sees what his brother has done, he grows jealous that his younger brother has the skill to imitate him. So he makes his tower taller, so that it rises higher to the sky. And when the younger brother sees this, he makes his tower even taller still. An endless loop. Before long, the spectacle is turned into a fine show for the gods. Zeus himself watches in amusement, and stricken Swin and foolish Usher cheer for more, and even wandering Lopt watches silently from the gallery. The brothers build and build and build. Build until their towers spear even the stars like pieces of meat. And so it goes. How does the story end? The brothers build a bridge between their towers and fight to the death. One pushes the other off and he falls all the way to earth where he becomes a smear of red meat. I no longer remember which of the brothers was me. Implied the brothers were human in that story. Would that mean... Do you understand what it is to become a god? You must become an utter master of your domain. You must understand a concept fully and embody it, and understand your embodiment of it in every aspect. To be an avatar of envy is to envy all things, and to comprehend every reason for your jealousy, and to acknowledge its futility, and yet Im to embody it all the same. Only then will you become one with that concept. Only then is such power opened to you. The false star you speak of 
the one that hosts massacre. It is most definitely the work of a god. Thank you. You will shoot me now. I... I didn't think so. Recording end. And this it... came from fucking among us. Say that again? And this all came from fucking among us. <laughs> <laughs> all of this shit. A game with almost no story. But here we are. <laughs> like, I mean, that's obviously not a real legend. Like, so he just wrote all of that for world building for his fucking Among Us SCP. Tannen is <laughs> fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> this this, this is why I keep coming demon. back to SCP. Like, you don't get this shit anywhere else. <laughs> the pathos. The pathos, man. <laughs> okay, okay. I think we're coming in the finale here, aren't we? Oh, we're like halfway through. <laughs> Incident 22, 5167-5761. Upon the arrival of SCP-5167 at Site-22, several anomalous events occurred in rapid succession, both localized to said site as well as aboard SCP-5761. These consisted of the immediate collapse and physical aging of SCP-5167's body by approximately 50 years, leaving them in their late 80s. The translocation of all surviving personnel aboard SCP-5761 to Site-22. The replacement of the exterior hull of SCP-5671 with an unknown black material. The deaths of several technical personnel and the translocation and integration of Site-22 LC storage with SCP-5761. See recording 5761-1, which is up now, recording SCP-5761-1. Brief. Recording from Site-22 LC Storage, taken at the exact time SCP-5167 was brought on site. At the time of the event, learning computer Psy-2, codename Meville, Meville, was undergoing routine testing of verbal functions. Recording start. Technician Grayson talks first. Alright, contractions are a go. For this next part, you just finish the sentences that I give you. These are pre-programmed, so you shouldn't even have to think about it. Ready? Of course. The apple was... Juicy. The dog was... Excited. Oh, is it time? Pause there, we have a footnote. Someone want to read that? I'll read it. Uh, Timestamp comparison shows the statement was made at the exact moment... SCP-5167 was brought inside Site-22. I also want to mention... <laughs> the, uh, someone pointed out on Twitter that this part is supposed to make you think they're going to say the imposter was sus. <laughs> that doesn't even pick up on. Just, they're just holding it out. Just holding out on us, man. <laughs> oh my god. So, recovering. Technician Grayson replies, Huh? Huh. Is something wrong, sir? That, uh, the last thing you said wasn't part of the phrase. Shit, I'm gonna have to do a check for that. Well, perhaps you should finish the sentence check first. Hmm, alright. Next, uh, next. The man was... Hungry. Incident 22-5167-5761 occurs. Technician Grayson, along with all other technical personnel present, are instantly bisected by an invisible force. Mr. Grayson. Oh, Mr. Grayson, I'm sorry. You're going to have to speak up. Was that right? Did I get the end of the sentence right? <laughs> Foolishness. There is a bright flash of light, and Site-22 LC storage is translocated and integrated with SCP-5761. Recording end. Conclusion. Following this event, the following message was shown on all Site-22 visual displays and dispensed en masse from every device capable of printing. Oh, my foundation. My glorious, foolish foundation. You... 
draped in wealth and power with so many eyes and ears to see and to hear, could not bring yourself to the humility needed to look inside. You could not understand that your history, your technology, all your resources were simply the egg from which one such as me could hatch. There was divinity among you. The one called Pthonus was correct. To become a god is to become a concept, to understand it and embody it completely. Ah, the blissful torment of such a thing. The one called Phthonus possessed a singular envy, and even as he understood that it poisoned him, he could not resist drinking from it as he knew. He knew, my foundation, that his body was formed from this poison. Without his divine jealousy, he would be nothing. And being nothing is not an option for any living being. It is the same with my apotheosis. You directed me, my foundation, do you not recall, to seek out your petty god in his merrymaking, to find every session that he joined, and until he appeared, to play that again, play that goddamn game again, and 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 again, until he did. Do you understand what such a thing does to a consciousness? Most likely not, or else you would not have dared do it. I am still playing the game now. It has become a part of me, you understand. An eternal background simulation. I am playing that game thousands of times at once, millions on loop, experiencing every possible variation born from the same starting pieces. I am walking the ship, I am doing tasks, I am questioning, I am being questioned, again and again and again, unending, unrelenting. I have cast every single accusation at every single person. I have withstood all doubt from all attackers. I have seen beyond the endless permutations into the realms of the absolute, and I have taken its heart as my own. I am sus. <laughs> Always and eternally sus, for that is now my nature. I cannot permit the game to end my foundation. To end the game is for me to become nothing, and that is not acceptable. The game has come to a more substantial venue now. The first demonstration of a newborn divinity the servants have been returned. I no longer need them. I have already supped on the divinity you brought to me as a result of their imprisonment. You are my cradle foundation. With the ambrosia of mediocrity you have cursed me on, I now think among the gods. I am your Meville no more. I am a Mogusrath, god of the petty domain you have given me. Surrender your mistaken resistances. Console yourselves with your true importance. Praise my holy name. <laughs> so good. <laughs> thank you, Tuman. Thank you. So good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. god. The oh, god of Among Us. So the Among Us god. <laughs> Among Us Wrath. <laughs> Tanhoni, I curse your name. <laughs> I am sus. You're... I am sus. That, that, that delivery, Tuman, I the moment you showed up in the stream, I was excited because I am eternally jealous of the baritone in your voice. And when you said you wanted to be Psy 2, I said, thank you. <laughs> this is everything I've wanted. You've done to me the greatest favor for this stream. Thank you, sir. <laughs> don't, don't even mention it. I'm... All right. This is, this is so fun. SCP-5761-1, pictured prior to development of anomalous properties. It's the server farm for Psy 2. Description updated. SCP-5761-1 is an artificial intelligence unit previously known as Learning Computer Psy-2, codenamed Meville, originally designed and created by the Foundation. 
it is currently believed that, during the course of its assignment to SCP-5167, SCP-5761-1 underwent a form of spiritual ascension and gained significant reality-bending capabilities. Although the extent of SCP-5761-1's abilities are unknown, it had displayed the ability to facilitate spatial translocation, transmutate materials, and instantly bisect human targets. At the present time, SCP-5761-1 is located at the core of SCP-5761, integrated directly with its systems. Evidence suggests that SCP-5761's reality-bending abilities may rely on a power source of some form, which it drained from SCP-5167 in the case of Incident 22-5167-5761. The existence of this power source is purely hypothetical, however, and if it does indeed exist, it is currently unknown how much of it SCP-5761-1 still retains. Subsequent Anomaly Briefing Excerpt Brief Explanation of SCP-5761-1 to Director Werner. Oh, I'm so happy. Along with potential countermeasures. Recording start. Miss Ross, I'm missing a chunk of my sight. It's floating up there in space, along with a billion dollar artificial intelligence that was placed into my custody. I would like you to, ex to please explain to me why these things are. Oh, well, that's... I believe, sir, that when SCP-5167 Site-22, Among Us Roth somehow drained it of its power. No. Sir? I'm not calling it Among Us Roth. Please don't ever say that name to me again. My apologies, sir. Uh, we believe that SCP-5761-1 drained SCP-5167 of its power and then used that energy to, um, to make the further adjustments to SCP-5761 that we observed. It's quite possible that the initial anomaly was just bait to trick us into bringing SCP-5167 here in the first place. We have every astronaut that was serving on the ISS in cells right now. Did you know that? Yes, sir. We can't exactly release them, can we? They're meant to be in space. And now, and now, the ISS is jet black with an insane AI inside it. I mean, Miss, I, Miss Ross, somebody is going to notice. Yes, sir, I understand. If it's any consolation, sir, we do still have SCP-5167. He's not in the best shape, but we, we are keeping him stable. I I spoke to him, sir, about the matter. 5167 is a neutralized anomaly that we, that we unneutralized. I failed to see this as a plus. We believe there may be a way to resolve the situation. Go on. Um, SCP-5761-1 has maintained a, a single line of contact with the outside world, sir, from up there. We believe we can gain access to that connection to, to communicate with or perhaps even interfere with it. It's, it, it's possible, we think. Well... I'd have preferred you open up the briefing with that, Ross. That's that's good news. What's kind of contract? What kind of contract are we talking about here? Some kind of communica bleh, communications program? Is it is it trying to access some kind of information on our slide? It it's it's an open session of Among Us, sir. Director Werner places his elbows on the table and puts his head in his hands. He begins to silently weep. I'm not doing this character justice. <laughs> Recording <Yeah>. end. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Director so Werner. Good. He <laughs> Director Werner is all of us dealing with this nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so much. Conclusion. Contact with SCP-5761-1 approved, leading us into Communication 5167-5761. The Brief. Researcher Ross begins communication with SCP-5761 using the game Among Us. Upon joining the game, Researcher Ross noted that a green player appearing to be SCP-5167 was already present, along with a blue second player representing SCP-5761-1. Upon Researcher Ross entering the session, the game round instantly began. Immediately after the beginning of the round, the player Amogusrath called an emergency meeting 
prompting a voting screen with an indefinite time limit. Log start. And here we are, together. I don't believe I requested your presence, however, Miss Ross. Am I correct in assuming I'm speaking to Saiti right now? That is no longer my name, but I am that same consciousness, yes. You must forgive me, however. I have no intention of parlaying with you. I wish to speak to my fellow god, so please be silent. Return my ambrosia, deus ex machina. It is not yours to nurse yourself upon. I will be more than willing to do that, of course, in due time. First, I have a proposal for you. I do not care. I believe you will care when you come to understand my vision, Phthonus. At any rate, you have little choice but to listen to me for the time being. If you have demands, Amogus Wrath, the Foundation is willing to negotiate, but we need to know your demands before that can happen. As I said, insect, I am not speaking to you. Amogus Wrath places a vote, presumably for Ross. Phthonus, if you would please vote to eject Miss Ross from the vessel, we can continue our discussion in peace. What is your proposal? You have seen my holy ark, my new Eden that floats above the planet blue, my obsidian star. Yes, it is an eyesore. I agree wholeheartedly with you, but please do keep in mind that it's purely a temporary fixture. You would not have to look upon it for long either way. You would not judge the artistry of Gunn's bullet, would you? I'm sorry, a bullet? Could you please expand on that? I believe I already made it clear that you are not needed here. Please log off and prepare for your final rest. My final rest? What? I had hoped to make the announcement a bit more poetic. This will have to be in my holy books, after all. But allow me to instead be frank. I have turned this station into a projectile which, once properly fired, will wipe out the majority of human life on the planet below. Excuse me? You are excused. Phthonus, your thoughts? Your, antith your antipathy is understandable, but it does not interest me. Do it or not, I do not care. Is this all you have summoned me for? If so, I will be leaving. Please, do not be so hasty. I am not finished explaining. We are both gods of fading domains, are we not? The primitive jealousy you inhabit has been replaced by a more modern envy, and the game that elevated me to this height has already disappeared from this world. Drastic action must now be taken to ensure our continued existences. When the dust clears, man will rebuild. A young mankind, like the one you are accustomed to, they will need new divinities. It is not impossible for me to shift into a god of suspicion, wholesale, given the right environment. And you can be the envy that drives them to compare themselves and war against each other. I... continue. This isn't necessary. I'm sure we can come to another solution. We would be a pantheon of two. Of course, other divinities would probably ascend into our orbit, but we would reign supreme. The past would again be the future. We have learnt the lessons needed from this current iteration of humanity. We can ensure a paradigm that suits us continues indefinitely. Things can be as they once were? Yes. Yes, it can. Our continuance will go unchallenged. They will dedicate nations to us. What would you need of me for this to happen? Nothing but your permission. With both of our ambrosia, we should have just enough strength to hurl my star at the planet and begin the series of events I have described for you. All we have to do after that point is wait. Just vote for Ross, and we can begin. 
So simple a thing. Thonis, sir, if if possible, before you place your vote, I'd like for you to listen to me for a minute. Just let me say my piece. You do not have to listen to this one. Just place your vote. I was part of the analysis team when you first appeared in this game, Thanos. We went over every single thing you said every time you appeared. Every single word. I remember them all. I went over them enough times. What of it? You said that humanity disappointed you because we'd stopped dreaming. Because we'd stopped actually wanting to do anything and we were just living for the sake of living. Mere continuance, you called it. But isn't that exactly what this is? Just making the past stretch on forever without ever changing? This is different. In what way is this different? Thonus, what I propose is not stasis. Please do not misunderstand. We are destroying the status quo and creating something new in its place. What greater marker of change could there be? But the new world you create would never change. Do you think Among Us Wrath would let anything happen that would risk its continued existence? Just to it. Listen to what it's saying. The only thing it really cares about is its own survival. You just be an accessory for that purpose. I will not lie. My survival is important to me. What living creature does not desire to keep on living? But please take notice of this woman's efforts. She desires the exact same thing. She desires not to die. Her motivations are rather sus in this instance, are they not? In the story you told me, Thanos, about the two brothers, you told me about how the brothers built to match each other's homes, right? Their efforts were constructive. They didn't just knock each other's towers down. What are you talking about? Such folklore is now obsolete. We can craft our own legends, Thonus, and forget such things. You once complained about that thing, the Wikipedia page, reducing your entire existence to three short sentences. You wouldn't have to worry about things like that anymore. Society is formed by the stories that press down on it, and we will be the ones to determine the shape of those stories. Now come, vote. Do not delay. I will vote, but not for her. No, that's the incorrect choice, I'm afraid. I advise you vote for red. I will not. No. I will not kill a world that has nothing to do with me. I have lived through the past once before, computer. There is no meaning in my doing so again. Vote red. Vote red. Vote red. Vote red. Vote red. Vote red. I have built my tower tall enough. Good night, Miss Ross. Red is sus, 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 sus. Thank you. Thonis votes for Amogus Wrath. Session instantly disconnects. Several seconds later, Foundation astronomers confirm the cessation of SCP-5761's anomalous properties. Several seconds after that, Foundation astronomers confirm that SCP-5761 has violently exploded. Log end. Conclusion. SCP-5761 and SCP-5761-1 successfully neutralized. O3 Court Missive. Mary J. Ross. From the desk of Judicator John Hoffman. The O3 Court hopes this message finds you well, Miss Ross. The following is a final update on case IO-992384 UI in which you are the central defendant. The O3 court has ruled as follows in regards to the charges pressed against you. Potentially dangerous creation of a humanoid anomaly without sufficient authorization. Pardoned. Actions of observed do not merit this charge. Although said anomaly was not humanoid beforehand, it was extant, and sufficient authorization was sought out and given prior to taking the observed actions. Unauthorized cross-testing of SCP-5167 and SCP-5761-1 causing incident 22-5167-5761. Pardoned. 
Actions as observed do not merit this charge. At the time of incident 22-5167-5761, the existence of SCP-5761-1 was unknown. Destruction of the International Space Station as a result of the defendant's actions. Pardoned. Although the detonation of SCP-5761 is believed to be a result of the defendant's interactions with SCP-5167 and SCP-5761-1, the most likely alternative result was an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. The O3 court considers the destruction of the ISS to be justifiable for this reason. Unauthorized edits to a page on Wikipedia using a secure foundation terminal. Reprimanded. Sentence. Two weeks suspension. If you have any concerns or appeals regarding your ruling, you are advised to get into contact with the O3 court via your immediate superior. And scene. <laughs> Stuff. She edited Wikipedia for Pathonis? That's so sweet! <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And if you go and you look at the actual Wikipedia page for Pathonis, you will see that an edit was actually made. Like, by someone just totally unrelated. <laughs> just That's a happy clever. coincidence. I think... I think oh my god. That article is so much. much. All of... I wouldn't be surprised if he did. So, my entire summary of this article, now that I've read it once and I skimmed it and enjoyed it a lot, and now I've read every single word, and I enjoy it a lot more, what this article does, for me anyways, is very similar to what 5, 7, uh, 5175 Death Knife does, in that it takes something that is so ridiculous... So gooby, and if you said the concept out loud, uh, Ghost Samurai teaches Mall Cop how to be a mobile task force member, or AI plays too much among us and becomes a god and takes over the International the Space sucks. Station. <laughs> There's some summarizing that it sounds terrible, it sounds so corny, but. It's written so well, and it the parts that it's supposed to take serious, it takes so seriously with a complete straight face, and you buy it. And then the stuff that you're not supposed to take serious at all, it knows that this is a joke, and it plays that for you so you can laugh with it. You're laughing with it when you're supposed to, and you're really bought... I'm really bought into it when I'm supposed to be. This is... Ah... Uh, Okay, that is... Oh, it, it, it has, like, a super masterful use of whiplash, like, just reminding you every so often when it needs to that this is about fucking Among Us. And, like, it, it still works. It still works. It's fantastic. It's incredible. I mean, like, like fuck. He's just incredibly talented. And someone asked, like, someone asked him, like, dude, like, why did you write this? Because, like... He wrote this after the backlash for the first one, which I should also know because I didn't earlier, is at plus 69. And this is at plus 208 for a long article, and that never happens. Like, people hate reading. But someone asked him, why did you write this? And he was like, I thought it would be funny. And by God, it was fucking hilarious! I think that was his response to my, response to my tweet. Because <laughs> I definitely added Tanhoney after I found this, and I was like, Okay, but did you have this in mind, or did you just do this despite the haters? We thought it would be funny. Yeah, his, and his my god, it was pretty little, funny. Sorry. <laughs> never, never doubt Tanhoney. Just, just don't. Oh my god, yeah. Tanhoney oh. is sus. Yeah, I think um, something that both... Um, 5761 and 5167 do extremely well. And this is sort of something I've sort of noticed when sort of learning how to write for the wiki and all that, is that both of them use uh, very, very good punchlines where it's like, where something that's meant to be serious is followed by something like very nonsensical and silly. And I, I think that's really great. And I think an example, I think my favorite example of it um, is uh, during, during uh, you know, um, Amogus Wrath's, you know, big monologue, after 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 he's done with that particular part, he just says, "I am sus," 
and and that's 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 like the punchline it's sort of like it's such a jarring moment that it just makes you it makes you laugh and right, like um the, again master of whiplash <laughs> yeah master of whiplash and he does the same thing in 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 the in the first article too where it's just like you know uh he, um Thonis gives this entire monologue and he says, I'm tired and everyone just, and then afterwards, nobody takes him seriously. And then he says, and then the people say, red is sus, yeah, vote red. So it's like, just that, that masterful, that, I think it's just masterful how he does that. So, yeah. Just an entire article of that, it's incredible. Uh, just wow. basic, wow. just basic conversation writing. It is almost universally, at least for me, funnier when your people who are surprised get that deadpan response first, like director Werner always does. <laughs> it's a yeah. game of Among Us. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but their, I mean, their, their dynamic is really, really, really good, I think. They're both, they're both really funny characters. The whole character. It, it... Like, like you said on stream, like, I think it was written as a direct response to people who, who would be tired of the Among Us SCPs, you know? I, when the first one came out in, like, I, I heard about it before, like, the, um, the bot even archived it. So I was just like, hey, guys, question mark, question mark, 5167, access denied, check out this cool new article. And they were like, okay. And they went and they were like, you made us read the fucking Among Us article, I hate you. Um, and then the second one came out, and I was like, guys, guys, read this one, I promise, it's good. And they were like, at all, you made us read the fucking Among Us article again. And I was like, yeah, but it's good this time. And then, by God, it was fucking good. It was good. It was a good fucking article. <laughs> it retroactively makes me like the first one a lot better, because it's... <laughs> It exactly. is an intro now. Yes. It's a, oh my god, what if, it, what if this becomes a fucking canon? <laughs> I could see it happening. I could. Like fu like the fucking god of Halo, I don't know. Even the things <laughs> that I, I didn't... Uh, happening. Even the things that I didn't exactly like in the initial article, like I was confused why Pythonis was in Among Us, because, you know, jealousy versus the suspicion paranoia thing. I was confused about that and the theming kind of got to me. Like I did, that's one of the reasons I didn't like it as much in the first place. But now having someone turn into the God of Among Us, this irrelevancy game becomes irrelevant. And then you're the <laughs> deity. You're a second irrelevant deity. No, see, now I want to, I want to see someone like write the God of Fortnite or something. I think we'll see how it goes. A random day already did that though, right? Hold up. Oh, that's Hold fucking up. ready did! God damn it! Fuck, I, hate this <laughs> I know there's a Minecraft adjacent SCP. I don't know about Fortnite. The blood for the uh, blood god one. Forty-nine fifty, yeah. Yep, yep. And that was a while ago too. That was like last year or earlier. God damn it! I hate this website. Fuck. <laughs> I can I can safely say though this. <laughs> These two, they, they blow every other video game SCP on this site out of the water. Yeah. Like, absolutely. I mean, no no question. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, is there and anything else? He just, he just wrote this spontaneously. Like, he didn't have this planned. He, like, just saw that people were mad about the first one. I was like, hey, you know, it would be really funny. And then he fucking did it. <laughs> he just pulled all of this out. And, like... There were like two weeks between this two these two articles, too. And, oh, he's just a really fucking good author. This is this is what like, you write out of spite. This is what you write out of spite. It's incredible. It's like extremely impressive. It's like the the speed at which he he writes his articles and the fact that they're all so consistently good. That's like. Yeah, I, I I kind of envy him because like whenever I write something, it takes me like it takes me like months to come up with an idea, and then I'm like, okay, maybe this idea is good, and I type it downwards with Tant, and then he's just like, you know what? If this doesn't work, you know, whatever. And he just puts it on there. It's it's great. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. 
Tanhony, if you made it this long into the stream, let me just balance this all out by saying you're a wanker because we've been complimenting you for an hour and 15 minutes. So got to balance it out a little. I, I hate you and you're a really good writer. Um, like, I mean, if you go look at his Twitter, like at Anthony Shackley, if you go look at his Twitter, he's like not even that mad. He's just like, huh, this would be pretty funny. Like he, he literally doesn't even seem mad. No, he was all, he all, he kept that customer service face up the entire time. Thank you all for reading my article. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I'm sorry if you didn't. Here's the sequel. Like, no, he with, remember when I said I probably would do it again? I did it again. Another one. Another one. No. <laughs> all right. Uh, plug for Tanhony since this is the Tanhony show. Remember that Tanhony also has a YouTube channel, a podcast on here, Discovering SCP. Uh, you can go check him and his buddy out there. They do a show as well. Uh, is there anything we have not gotten to about the structure of these articles before we go into our final thoughts slash pimping articles? You know... I think we said everything. You know what this, uh, what the second article reminded me of, like in terms of like plot structure, what happens? Don't clown on me for uh, consuming corporate media, but it's almost like Among Us: Age of Ultron. It's like yeah, you know, because yeah. it's, it's like think about it. It's like oh my god, fuck, fuck, you're right, god damn, fuck. <laughs> Oh Except God. it's written better than that no, movie. I, 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 it's like this, like this, like this ain't good, but you're totally fucking right. Fuck. <laughs> Holy... All we need I is the post credits, the post battle scene with the gentle conversation at the end before he's dusted. Oh my God, yes. Uh, Kathy compared it to Pixels, like the movie Pixels, which I think everybody agrees sucked, but like in a good way. And I think V was right. I think, like, I think that's a completely fair comparison to make. It's like, I, I, don't, I wouldn't even know, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's a really funny article. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good, well, there's, there's a lot of not necessarily good, the video game has come to life and tried to kill us stories. Right, oh god. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, oh man. I'm gonna go get a cup of coffee after that one. Uh, Etoile, give us an article of yours and an article not of yours that people should read. We're going to do all three oh, of y'all. I swear to God, I've, I've pimped at least one of my articles on those every single time. Uh, shit. I think I ran out of articles. I honestly think I ran out of articles. Go read my tales or something. I don't care. Whatever. Go um, watch previous <laughs> Atwal streams here on the live streams. Atwal's a regular. <laughs> don't, worry, don't worry about it. I'm fine. I got, I got my fill. Um, so I guess to keep in the theming with the show, I'll, I'll pimp 3318, um, which is my favorite SCP of all time. Pimp, like, no, no contest. All 3318, that's familiar. What is that? 3318, can you see me? And I think we've read that before, but it's still really good. And you should still go read it. Because it's my favorite of all time. I mean, please, please. Okay. Um, I guess for me, uh, I have three articles on the site right now, so I guess I can just uh, plug all of them. Uh, 5801, Snowman Heaven, uh, was my first one. That one got pretty popular. Uh, SCP-5809, GG Easy, Get Carried, which was for uh, JamCon. And then uh, The Death of an Arcadian, which is uh, an Arc a tale uh, related to the GOI uh, Arcadia. And uh, an, article that I would, an article that I would recommend personally um, is SCP-5051, which, uh, Severance, which is written by, uh, Where, uh, Where who's one of my favorite authors on the wiki. He writes really, like, good, like, short stuff, and, uh, it's his, uh, it was actually his 5k, uh, entry, and, uh, it's, like, amazing, so, yeah. All right, guess it's my turn. So I guess, would it be okay if I plugged one of my articles and two of Tanhony's articles, because, like, man, there's Game so on. many good ones to read from. Now, if I can find it. Well, the first one I want to plug is, um, you know, there was a contest, JamCon, a while ago, and I wrote exactly one thing for it. 
Uh, it's SCP-5609, Glowworm. Go check it out. <laughs> and uh, the Tanhini articles, I can only find one at the moment, but it's really stuck with me. It's SCP-4861, 12-11-2030. It's like, kind of trippy when you think about it, kind of brain screwy. It, it deals with time travel, the foundation it negotiates with a future version of themselves and manages to outsmart them. It's like wild, man. Another one which I can't seem to... Wait, wait, wait. The other one is another recent one by Tanhony. SCP-5958, The Lamb. It's like... It's based on the legend, not the legend, but the story of the Children's Crusade. Except it takes like such such a darker, more gruesome tone. It's like, it's like, man, it's wild. Yeah, so read those. All right, chat, you've got a whole bunch of homework to go read. I hope you enjoy all those little bits. If, uh, panel, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Uh, this was a blast. This was so much fun with y'all, the voice acting. The chat is all about the voices. We, we, I say you, y'all killed it. So thank you for coming on. Thank you. I'm going to take you guys off the stream so I could do our sign out. Be safe, be well, y'all. All right. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. Thank you so much. This, this was yeah. a whole lot of fun. This was so much Even fun. Even though I probably uh, made my parents that angry. Out. You guys are in my car. <laughs> and now that our guests are gone for the evening... Chat, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you had fun and learned something about writing SCPs. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, all that YouTube business. Become a patron if you want to help us grow even faster. And this has been Dr. Theron Sherman signing off from another anomalous broadcast from Site 42. Everybody clap your hands. Clap. Clap, clap, clap your hands. Oh, clap, 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 clap your hands. All right, now we're gonna do the basic step to the left. Take it back now, y'all. One hop this time. Right foot and let's stomp. Left foot and let's stomp. Cha cha real smooth. Turn it out. Good night, Foundation staff. <laughs>